everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there, we have John Lewandowski. Hey. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Uh, we have a couple of announcements before this. Sh- we get into the details of our show. Um, one, our Twitter is in flux. So for anybody uh, that is looking for our Twitter page or uh, on our Twitter page, we uh, apologize. Um, I made some alterations to the Twitter page and they locked us out. So um, we are currently trying to get that back as soon as possible. If not, we will create a new one and have a link to it on our page immediately. Following. Um, secondary. Um, the uh, the uh, Florida Everblades fell in a shootout three, uh, four to three. Um, we apologize to the Florida Everblades fans. Um, also, we apologize that, like I said, I just tweeted out a photo saying we apologize. So for those of you, like I said, that follow us on Twitter, um, like I said, that is uh, revert to our Facebook page at Facebook dash uh, from MKE to uh, the number and Nash. Um That will get you all of the updated info that you need for the time being. Um, We are, I will be working very hard to get that back up and running tomorrow. If not, I will create a new page tomorrow. So um, we will be back going uh, as hard as we can at this. So let's get into tonight. Tonight, the Nashville Predators went into game five in Raleigh, Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um... They have not won there since 2018. Um, So since Rod Brendamore has been coach, they have not won in Carroll. That being said, I'm kind of going with a different script today. So um, I feel like they gave everything they had. Um and more. It just wasn't right. to the skill level that Carolina had. Um, I mean, when when you look at it, uh, Carolina outshot them thirty-seven to twenty-five, so they had more opportunities. Um, they were both even at three penalties apiece. Um, but Car- Carolina converted on one of the power plays, uh, the faceoffs. Uh, they were a little lopsided. And by little, I mean marginal, by 59 to 41. Uh, The penalties were, like I said, even a piece. Um, Hits were not even at all. Carolina out hit them 66 to 40. Um, Block shots were 16 to 12. I mean, Nashville out blocked them again, but they're known to do that. Uh, The giveaways were lopsided, like table tilt lopsided, you know. Like, if you stuck a foosball table towards one side and then had to play that way, (laughs) um, it's just not going to work for you. Um, I mean, they were 21 to 4. Good job, Nashville, by not giving them more opportunities, by giving them the puck. Uh, Takeaways were 7 to 4, so they were pretty even. Um, On the downside... Uh, on the upside, Yakov Trenin had two goals, accounting for both of the yeah. goals scored by Nashville in regulation. Um, Martin Nikas also had two goals, accounting for both goals in regulation, one on the power play. Um, Yossi and Sissons, both are, are uh, Yossi assisted on the first one. Uh, that's his third. And uh, Sissons assisted on the second one. That, that's his second. Um uh, Jacob Slavin saved, uh, got his first point in the playoffs after not playing for the last three games. Um, the OT winner was scored by jo- Jordan Stahl. Uh, kind of a sloppy, pl- sloppy play in, in OT. Um, they kind of lost awareness. I, I think that um, – Playoffs are particularly stress, stress, bleh, stressful, <laughs> um, but when you have yeah. when you have consecutive three consecutive OT games, um, 
that can wear on you, both teams mentally. And yeah, it can. I think it's wearing on Carolina physically and Mash- Nashville mentally. Um, yeah. And to some extent, because of the physical drain that it is taking on Carolina, because they haven't been pushed like this all season, um, it does take to a, uh, a mental edge off of them because they haven't been pushed to that extent. And they felt like they had to come out and attack early, and Nashville thought that they were going to back off a little bit and kind of let it play out, but they didn't, and Nashville made a, a, a mistake. Um, and that was UC Soros. Soros played phenomenal again, except for the uh, Martin Nikas goal that was on him. Um, he was missed. Uh, uh, he had bad positioning on that one. Um, not off the initial, but he just didn't have the time and the ability because of the positioning he was in to stop the puck. That. I mean, it happens. I've had days that that's happened to me when I played, uh, you know, but you've got to stay square with the net. But I also understood that, you know, mistakes happen. He's still a little young on the goalie side of things. Uh, most goalies don't mature till yeah. 26 to 28. Um, he's slowly getting into that age gap. I do believe he is 26 years old. Um, in net for... Uh, Carolina was Alex Dalkovich, and he, yes, I, he is 26, right on the head. Um, uh, he stopped 23 at 25 with a 0. .920 save percentage. He had another good night. Um, I think that uh, Morazic is a thing of the past for Carolina, and Nadalkovich will be their starter going forward. Um, I think they're a one two, good one-two tandem, much like Nashville has in, in Pekka and Saros, uh, except yeah. for younger. Uh, much like Vegas has Leonard and and, uh, and Flurry, I I think that there's a chance we may see Pekka at some point in the playoffs because Saros looks drained and tired and making mental errors. Yeah, so you may see Pekka in the next game. It's possible, um, just because of the the drain that playing three consecutive overtime games in a span of five days or six days, three consecutive overtime. You've played four games in, in six days now officially. So with the time frame, it's not really well. Uh, one of my favorite referees, Wes McCauley, was on the call for, for today, uh, along with Garrett Rank and Frederick LaCour. Uh, linesmen were Andrew Smith and Brian Ponchich. Uh, like we've talked about, head coaches John Hines and Rod Brendamore. Uh, Tyler Lowington, Brad Richardson, Memphis, like David Ferris, Rocco Grimaldi, Ty- Matthew Olivier, Philip Tomasino, Victor Arvidsson, Jeremy Davies, Erica Branson, Michael McCarrick, Dante Fabro, and Casper Kaskis. Sewell were the scratches for Nashville. For the scratches for Carolina were Cedric Parquette, Max McCormick, Drew Shore, Joachim Ryan, Anton Bubo, Maxim LaJoy, Joey Keane, James Reimer, Jake Gardner, Roland Minow. Ryan Suzuki and Morgan Kiki. Uh, I've actually been quite surprised that Morgan uh-huh. Kiki has not played, but it is what it is. Um, on this note, Saros in the playoffs in twenty in this year, he is two and two with an OT loss. Um, two two and one. He has the same percentage uh, in in the Vesna category area at the point nine. Two one, um, with a goals against average of two point five two, um, not that bad. Uh, it's actually lower than his, right. uh, a little higher than his stats, but it's right around his career NHL career stats, along with his save percentage. Um, so with that being said, uh, I I think he needs a little bit of positioning work, but other than that, he plays. Right. Well. Um, given that. Uh, uh, one other thing happened. Cameron Hebig was called, uh, was assigned to the Florida Everblades. They, um, uh, from the Tucson Roadrunners, he signed with them in the summer. And when, 
uh, the Tucson Roadrunners had him out on tryout during their training camp. They signed him, and uh, he was uh, then sent back to Florida to play the beginning of their season uh, because uh, Tucson was unsure if the AHL was even going to have a season. So, But they held, like, a development camp, which is one of the few AHL teams that do so. Um, I don't even think we do. Right. Still holds our development camp. They bring in guys for us to look at, um, which is kind of cool because, I mean, you think about it, you're playing on, on, on an NHL rink. Um, right. And that may be the only time you ever get to do so. Um, the Florida Everblades, uh, Cameron Hebig, in his, his return, scored a goal, actually, um, as well as had an assist. Two assists. As well as the Admirals prospect uh, Zach Salo scoring a goal. So, with that being said, a uh, pretty solid night for, for the Everblades. Um, Wacy Rabbit, a former Admiral, uh, made his return for the Jacksonville Icemen. Um, and uh, like I said, they fell four to three. So, giving you a little bit of, of what we weren't able to do tonight due to the time frame. Uh, with our show and uh, this is a little bit of a different kind of setup that we're doing because I feel we needed some changes to be made yeah Um, I wanted to switch things up a little bit and it's a little easier to have the communication between me and John so yeah so uh John uh how are you feeling about this game I mean like the Preds game, I mean, do you think that they gave everything they had, or do you just feel like there was a little bit left in the tank? No, I feel like they gave it everything they had. Uh, I know some players didn't pass the puck nearly as much as they should have, and that could just be a fatigue thing setting in. Yeah, Duchesne's one of them. (laughs) Killer. Um, I mean, and there was part of me that really wanted Trenton yeah, to get yeah, that. Yeah, I think thing. they played well. Yeah. Um, the other, the other thing I, I kind of was curious about was Ben Harper is not your shutdown defensive guy you want out there in the last five minutes, and um, he was out there for the third goal scored against on the penalty kill. Do you or the second goal scored against? Of the penalty kill, do you think at this point that maybe Nashville brings in Favro and sees what can happen? Because at this point, you know, Harper and uh, and Gabranson haven't really done much, but Benning's played well. Um, right. Uh, but Favro hasn't played since the last, uh, since the first game against Carolina. They sat him at in the second game and they have not played him since. Um, I don't I right. think he is injured. Um, that is not something that we've been told, nor does any of the stat finder and any of the injury reports that we get and that I see. see right. on it, they're all healthy scratches except for Arvidsson. So, I mean, it's kind of like we're in a situation of what are you thinking? I mean, he's got, he would be able to. Now, here's the thing I'm not saying Ellis, since being split up from Yossi has been playing phenomenal, as well as Yossi with Carrier has been a really good tandem. So, I mean, I'm not yeah. talking about those things, but is is Fabro really – are they really thinking Fabro may not be the piece of the future? Maybe not. not. I mean, is that a piece you move in a trade so that you could get – Duchesne in uh, uh, out of there. You have to give something with potential to get cap off. There's, it's just going to happen right. in that way. When Seattle yep. comes falling in that, you're going to have to do that to protect your team. And right. like Fabro yeah. with Barron's coming in and, and all these other pieces coming in and all the young talent like a lard and stuff like that. You, I mean, Nashville really on the defensive side has no worries to lose. It's the offensive side that scares me. And right. Duchesne has not added to that outside of the $8 million OT goal he scored. You know, um, I, I just don't see it at this point. 
it, it's really getting frustrating um, when, when talking about Duchesne because I was so happy for him to be here and then he's just choked. Or he's yeah. in his own head. <clears throat> That's not something we should be punished for. If you're wrapped up in your own, right. you need to go into player safety protocol. It's not safe for the team to play with you. If you're wrapped up in your own head and the game is getting to you, you need to go into player safety protocol. If you're feeling down about your abilities, you need to go into player safety protocol. There is, they do that for a reason so that bad things don't happen. Right. Because I don't want this to get any worse than it is. I've seen, you know, guys like Ribeiro uh, before coming to Nashville, he had a big alcohol problem, entered player safety protocol and turned his career around until it was over. Um, you know, and, and with those things being said, you know, that's, that's just how we are at this point. You know, this is where we're at. I mean, there's nothing really we could do anymore. You know, so... Uh, for from Milwaukee to Nashville, sponsored by Hockey Locker. You can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and we will get our Twitter fixed. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. <laughs>